Good morning, everyone. Bonjour à tous. I want to begin by acknowledging that we are gathered on the traditional territory of the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nation and the Haudenosaunee, the ancestral lands of the Huron-Wendat, and home to many diverse Indigenous peoples, First Nations, Inuit, and Métis peoples. My name is Richie Valdez, the Member of Parliament of Mississauga Streetsville, and I'll be your host for today's proceedings. I'm pleased to be here with my colleagues, Peter Fonseca, MP for Mississauga East Cooksville, Francesco Sarbara, MP for Vaughan Woodbridge, and Shafkat Ali, MP for Brampton Center, as well as with the Transport Minister, Omar Algebra, to join him in making this important announcement today. Please join me in wel welcoming Omar Algebra to speak. All right, I have a number of fans here. Good morning, everyone. Um, thank you very much, uh, Richie. It's great to be with all of you. Thank you all for being here. Uh, again, I want to reiterate uh, that I'm pleased to be here with my friends, um, Peter, uh, Richie, Shafkat, and Francesco. I also want to start by thanking workers in the air sector for their hard work, including this week, as many people begin uh, their March break, and happy March break week, everyone. We all know that the uh, COVID-19 pandemic has caused massive disruptions to the airline sector that contributed to challenges that we saw last summer and over the winter holiday season. Those challenges have been particularly difficult for travelers and the industry as a whole. Travelers have experienced unacceptable delays, flight cancellations, lost luggage, and many more issues. The industry and our government have been working together to make sure issues are addressed. But it's clear that there's still work to be done. As a result of the unprecedented disruptions, there have been large volume of complaints that have been sent to the Canadian Transportation Agency, also known as the CTA. Our government was the first in the country's history to introduce an air passenger rights regime in 2019 that makes clear how airlines must treat and compensate passengers based on the level of control the airline has over flight disruption. In response to the pandemic, we even strengthened the passenger rights regime last fall to include refunds for situations outside the airline's control, including major weather events or a pandemic. Currently, travelers who believe they are entitled to a refund or comp compensation must first contact the airline who sold them the service and if the traveler still believes that they have not been provided what they are entitled to, they can file a complaint with the agency, which is an independent quasi-judicial body. The events of the past few months have resulted in a record number of complaints to the agency, and these complaints must be answered as quickly as possible. Since 2019, our government has always provided more resources to the CTA, to help it implement the Passenger Bill of Rights, but it's clear that even more resources are now needed to clear the backlog. So today, I'm announcing that we are providing close to $76 million more over three years to the agency to reduce the backlog of complaints and make sure travelers get the money they're entitled to from the airlines as soon as possible. J'annonce près de 66 million de dollars pour répondre plan. Thanks to this money, the agency will be able to hire more staff to handle complaints and improve its procedures. For example, this means about 200 additional employees for air passenger protections over the next three years. So the $76 million over three years will significantly increase the processing of number of complaints. I also want to point out that we are currently working on major changes to passengers' rights to ensure that the burden of proof no longer rests with travelers, but with the airline. In closing, I want to reiterate that everyone is mobilized to ensure that we have an air sector that is efficient for travelers and for workers. Our government will also be there to support it because we know how much the sector contributes to building an economy that works for all Canadians. So thank you, to, uh, thank you and to everyone who is traveling for, uh, for enjoying time off this week. 
I hope you have a great March break. Merci. Thank you. Back to you, Richie. Thank you, Minister. Uh, for sharing this amazing news for air passengers, I'd like to turn it over now to Nadine Ramadan, Press Secretary and Communications Advisor to Minister Algebra, who will moderate the question and answer session. Thanks so much. So we'll now begin the question and answer period. It'll be one question, one follow-up per reporter. Uh, and you can use the mic over here. So do we have a first question? Uh, good morning, Minister. Simon Dingley from CBC News. Uh, Minister, can you tell us, with the backlog of complaints in the tens of thousands and an almost 18-month waiting list, why should Canadians believe that today's announcement will resolve this issue? Um, thank you, Simon. Um, the, first of all, uh, as I explained in my remarks, because of the unprecedented disruption uh, that we saw last summer, we saw an avalanche of unprecedented uh, complaints. Um, and that has stressed the resources that the CTA has. Today we are providing an increase of over than 70% of the base budget that CTA typically operates with. That is a significant increase of $25 million a year that will help uh, accelerate uh, the processing of these complaints. Plus, this is only, by the way, one step of the package of um, reforms that we're introducing that will also give the, uh, the CTA additional authorities so they can process complaints efficiently. So I want Canadians to feel confident that we're taking action, that the CTA is doing whatever they can uh, to process these complaints as quickly as possible. I believe you gave uh, the CTA 11 million last year to speed up the complaints process. How will this make any difference, just throwing money at it? Well, as I said, uh, this will, in real term, mean 200 additional employees who will focus exclusively on complaints. That will take a massive dent out of the backlog. But on top of that, the other things that we're working on, and stay tuned for its introduction, is that we are going to give the CTA authorities to process complaints faster and more efficiently. So it's the combination of improving uh, the efficiency of the process plus additional resources will mean significant improvement to the processing time. Thank you, Thank you Minister. Thank you. Hi, Matt Ingram, CHCH News. Good I can't hear you, by the way. Matt Ingram, CHCH yeah. News. It's a huge backlog. Does your government have a timeline for how, this, how quickly you'll be able to get through it given this new money? Uh, you're right. The backlog is huge. Um, I think the last I checked, it was 42,000 complaints. Um, stay tuned. As I said, it's the combination of the re uh, financial resources plus the upcoming introduction to new tools and authorities to the CTA that will accelerate uh, uh, processing complaints. Um, it won't be done overnight, but it will significantly improve the processing time of complaints. For Canadians who are waiting for money they feel that they deserve from these airlines, stay tuned might not be much of an answer. What do you say to people who are frustrated, who are beyond the pale in terms of dealing with these disruptions and, and getting what they're owed? I, I share their frustration, and this is precisely why we're taking action. Um, and um, I talked in the past about the asymmetry of power that airlines have over passengers and that the government needs to do whatever it can to rebalance that, that power. Uh, it is important that passengers uh, are protected and feel protected. Uh, there have been unprecedented disruptions that we saw last summer, not only in Canada, but around the world. We are one of the jurisdictions that actually learning from those lessons that we learned over last year, and we are taking action. So. Uh, the answer when I said stay tuned is the time that, uh, uh, that I expect the backlog to be cleared. It's hard for me to tell you exactly what the time is, but we are taking serious action that includes resources plus in, uh, improved processing time. Thank you, sir. Good morning, Minister Armand. I'm coming to you with the Canadian Press. Um, on the question of passenger compensation, airlines constantly cite uh, safety-related issues as a reason for flight cancellation. Uh, but advocates say this loophole 
um, in the passenger rights charter has deprived passengers of millions of dollars in compensation. Um, this uh, uh, this loophole doesn't exist in, in uh, the European regulations. Uh, will the government close this loophole of, sa for, uh, of safety issues that fa fall within the airline's control um, in, to, in its overhaul of air passenger bill of rights? The short answer is yes. We are working on uh, strengthening and clarifying the rules to ensure that we make a distinction. Of, obviously, we don't want planes to fly when, when it's unsafe to do so. But there are certain things that are within the control of the airlines, and we need to have clearer rules that, uh, um, uh, that puts the responsibility on the airlines when it's their responsibility. So yes, uh, and as I promised Canadians, we are going to be tabling these new rules this spring. OK. Um, right now, the Canadian uh, Transportation Agency has the power to find companies for violation of the air passengers' uh, protection regulations. but. It, the, the agency has issued only few of these penalties, um, and the ones that had handed um, were largely concerned, concerned with communication with passengers. So uh, will the government revise the mandate, uh, the CTA's mandate, to beef up its role uh, uh, as an investigative and enforcement body? Look, the Canadian Transportation Agency is a quasi-judicial independent body um, that it is important that it does its operation independent and separately from uh, politicians and government. Um, my understanding is that they have, and, and by the way, the CTA has attended um, uh, the parliamentary committee and answered questions on that. They have issued a number of fines over the last year or so, including just recently to two major airlines. Um, so we are looking at strengthening the rules, as I said, and perhaps looking at increasing the authorities that the CTA has. But I leave it up to the CTA to exercise its judgment and when and how to impose uh, these fines. Hi, Minister. Megan Fitzpatrick from CBC. Can you just elaborate a bit more on, you're talking about changing the rules, strengthening, strengthening them shifting the burden from passengers to the airlines. What does that look like? What exactly are you considering doing? Um, I've, we've had conversations about this uh, over the last few months, is that the, uh, the disruptions that took place last summer have exposed certain vulnerabilities in the regime that we have. And the idea here is that we want to create an incentive for airlines so that they deal with the complaints themselves when a passenger has a complaint, instead of deferring to the CTA. And that if they choose to defer to the CTA, uh, there, might, there will be a disincentive for the airlines to do so. Uh, the specifics of these rules will be tabled in the House of Commons this spring. Um, so I will leave the specifics until we are able to talk about them. But yes, we are strengthening and clarifying and simplifying the rules uh, for passenger protection. And you're consulting with the airlines about this. Can you share what you're hearing from them? Are they on board with strengthening the rules in the way that you are suggesting? Um, let me just say first that the airlines um, have thousands of employees who are working their best to serve their customers. No employee of an airline is happy to see a passenger that, who is not happy. So I want to express my gratitude to everyone who's doing their best. But again, certainly we've seen an, a number of, uh, of frustrations that passengers have had to deal with. And I talked about addressing the imbalance that currently exists between passengers and airlines. Uh, I've been speaking directly with airlines since last fall about reforming this, uh, the system. Uh, Airlines obviously are offering their point of view about what happened last summer. Uh, uh, it is important that we consult them, uh, but where we disagree, we will disagree. And I'm sure they'll have their, they'll let their opinion known to me once we table the new rules. Tini is Danny with City News. Um, here at Pearson, we've heard a lot of issues with staffing and staffing levels not getting to where they need to be in order to address some of the uh, problems that we've been seeing. So I want to know how, uh, what, what the government is doing to kind of address those issues because they're still at pre-pandemic, haven't reached pre-pandemic levels. 
Yeah, thank you for uh, raising that, Tina. It, it, indeed, the entire economy is dealing with chronic labor shortage, but certainly the air sector particularly has been uh, grappling with labor shortage. Um, at Transport Canada and at the government level, we've been working together with them at identifying certain bottlenecks to accelerate the, um, uh, the hiring and training of new employees, including uh, improving the efficiency of um, uh, security screening, how, is, how it's done, including, including the efficiency, improving the efficiency of uh, providing commercial pilots with licenses. So we are working together with them. Um, I am also, as part of the broader package that I am working on for the transportation sector, I am looking forward to introducing uh, new tools that will help the sector attract uh, more uh, employees. We're working with the Minister of Immigration, we're working with the Minister of Employment at identifying other tools to help the sector attract more of the labor that they're looking for. Okay, do we have further questions? Great, hearing none, that concludes our Q&A. Thanks. Thanks, everyone.